Hi, I'm Astrid. And I'm Matthew. And we are the Living Seed Company. We're a small heirloom seed company that offers collections of seeds. And by offering our seeds in collections, we take the guesswork out of gardening. We offered our first collection this year, the Founders Collection, which is a widely adapted collection, well suited for most growing conditions. We've selected varieties in our collections for food production, not just quantity, but also nutrition, things that store a long time, things that are versatile in the culinary arts, things that are widely adapted and extreme weather tolerant, things that are easier to grow, and also things that are really interesting. All of our seeds are open pollinated and they're not hybrid. And what that means is that you can save the seeds and the offspring will end up being exactly like the parent. Whereas with hybrids, um, you will not know what you're going to get and sometimes they are sterile. Another thing about open pollinated seeds that's really beautiful, probably the most beautiful aspect, is that you get to adapt these plants to your location. So every time you harvest the seeds from your garden, that that plant learns how to deal with your environment. And also takes the petroleum out of seeds, because what a lot of people don't realize is seeds are transported all over the country and all over the world, and we try to keep things as local as possible, and when you're saving your own seeds, you're sourcing them from your own backyard. Painted Mountain Corn, it's a, a flower corn. Not so long ago here in the United States, the people knew how to use this quite a bit. One of the things we want to do is educate or re-educate people about how to use flower corns and also the other varieties that uh, we offer. When people start connecting with their food system, they not only begin appreciating it more and realizing where it comes from, but they also start connecting on a deeper level to the essence of life, and that is the seed. We've sent a lot of these collections around the world and have had really good results with our widely adapted collection. We also started the Giving Seeds program which is our way of giving back to the community. And for every 10 collections that we sell, we donate one to a youth group program or a garden program around the world. Women's groups in India, in the Congo. Uh, we also do a lot with urban city gardens and farms. Youth groups here in the Bay Area and other urban organizations such as Planting Justice and City Slicker Farms. Through these programs, we're just hoping to really bring the process of seed saving back to these young people so that they can be empowered to start seed saving themselves. Now we want to show you a little bit of seed saving technique. We're going to start off with these amazing Galena tomatoes. These were brought back from the Soviet Union by our seed mentor and teacher Bill McDorman in the late 90s. Saving tomatoes is really easy. They're a perfect flower, which means both male and female parts are inside of the flower, and they self-pollinate. These little guys, you can just put inside the jar, make sure you're wearing clothes, you don't mind getting a little dirty because sometimes they explode. Squeeze out the tomato, and there you go. Have a bowl or something handy that you can put that in because then you can use the rest of the tomato to make a sauce, uh, ketchup, soup, something like that. You know, once you get, get a fair amount of seeds in there, you're gonna let it sit in the juice for a day to three days, uh, depending on how ripe the tomatoes are. You want the tomatoes to be fully ripe. Anytime you're saving seeds, you want that vegetable or fruit to be fully ripe. After a day or three, there will be a small amount of mold growing on the very top, and that mold is actually beneficial. It's something that has co-evolved with the tomato. And then what you want to do is add some water. All of the good seeds are gonna to sink to the very bottom the bad seeds are going to float to the top. You'll take a strainer and then you'll pour it out. And then you do this a few times because it's going to help get the, the rest of the particles of the, the flesh from the tomato. Once it's all good seeds and you've got most of the chunks of tomatoes out of there, you're going to pour it over the strainer and then you're going to gently rinse those and get any of the last pieces of tomato flesh out of there. You want to let that dry for a week, 10 days, maybe two, depending on your humidity. And when you can kind of break the seed with your fingernail, uh, when it kind of snaps instead of bends, you know that that seed is dry. And you'll have some great tomato seeds that you grew for yourself and adapted to your garden.
Squash seeds are relatively easy to process. The one concern you want to have is in the initial growing of the squashes. If you're growing multiple squashes or if your neighbors are growing squashes, you want to be concerned about cross-pollination. Information about that you can find in the basic seed saving booklet or other seed saving references. Cut open the squash delicately. Try to cut without cutting the seeds. I'm sure if you've ever eaten or baked squash, you've done this process. And you just want to do it in a strainer. And then you just pour cold water over it. Definitely do not use hot water. And then just start removing the seeds from the pulp. Once you have removed all the pulp, just rinse it once again with water and place the seeds in a clean plate. Screens are ideal, plates will work. Dry them in a warm, dry location. You'd want to turn them a bit once or twice a day. You do not want to leave them in direct sun. And being a, a small seed company like we are, we, we really want you to know that we're available. So you can give us a call anytime. We're, if we're not in the fields, we're normally around. Yeah, using social media, we also want to really create a larger community with the Living Seed Company. People sending their stories, their photos, their successes, their difficulties a uh, place where people feel connected, where they can share, and really feel like it's an extended community. On our blog, we have recipes and ideas for how to use these, these varieties. We also, as part of our educational outreach program, we host a seed school with our friend, teacher, and mentor, Bill McDormand from Native Seed Search. It's an opportunity for people from diverse backgrounds to come together and learn about the miracle of seeds, both the history and the present situation, as well as how to grow, how to process, all of the different tricks, and also the possibility of starting your own seed company or library or seed exchange. As we grow, we want to be able to continue to give more seeds away. And if we ideally succeed, we'll end up putting ourselves out of business. But the world would be a really good place if we did. Thank you for visiting us. We look forward to hearing from you. Happy gardening.